Well, hello, the planet Earth people that are watching the podcast. How you doing, Joe? Hey, good. Good to see you, Tony. Yeah, good to see you. Boy, that, boy, that room looks familiar. Where yeah, are it feels you? like I, I just saw you moments ago. Just I know it's been a, over a week since our podcast, but it literally feels like, you know, five minutes ago that I saw you last. <laughs> yeah, well, so Joe and uh, Brian Denise were here earlier. Brian left. Joe's here at, at my place. He's upstairs. I'm downstairs. We filmed a little video, uh, instructional video for one of the Tri-C members and his son. And it was great. The three of us uh, filmed that. So uh, after this podcast, I have to edit it and email it all the way to the great country of Canada. So the Canadians, you got a video coming Um that was actually a, a good one today. Uh, their lesson was, uh, their previous lesson was on spinning and how to, you know, ride on the ground, move on the ground, I should say. And today we kind of took it from there on how to add in submissions and so on. And um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Um, well, that's actually a, a good point. I mean, it kind of just, it kind of gives a sample of how you customize training for if someone was to join the Tri-C program. You know how you, they have this progression and it's literally a, a customized individualized training that you're doing even if they can't come physically to train with you all the time you are getting videos to them that are you know unique so um you know and they have access to all your previous videos isn't that correct if they sign up for the tri-c yep they get the downloads to all the video products but yeah and we have these customized videos not a cookie cutter so which is great. Um, it's like I said before, if you're a, an Olympic level wrestler, well, we're not going to, you know, we, we, we don't have to start with how to do a penetration step and all of that jazz. And here's how you do a double leg. We can circumvent that, show a few little things regarding that, but we go on to other stuff um, because there's so much to entail. It's really, you know, like a lifetime of study. Uh, and speaking of that, um, this intro video, uh, you know, the song Leon the Libra by Jerry Sigler. Well, Leon the Libra is, Jerry wrote that song for his old accordion teacher, jazz accordionist, Leon Sash, who was a Libra, his um, thing, astrological thing. And, you know, Jerry, when he was a kid, would, I mentioned this before, would hop on a Greyhound from Cleveland, take the Greyhound bus once a month to Chicago and they pick, you know, somehow he'd get picked up or he'd get over to Leon's house. Leon couldn't pick him up. Leon was blind. And he did his distance learning with music back then. Um, so distance learning is not a new concept. It's, uh, we're just using new technology to do it. But, um, you know, Dustin and Billy, the Canadians, they're, they're, they're a great example of what students should be like. They're dedicated. They're father and son. So, you know, they have each other to, to you know, uh, do things on. But, they're meticulous, they're patient, they uh, put in the hard work, the effort. There's no way they're gonna fail. They're, they're going to succeed. Um, and it's like, for me, it's just a pleasure. And you know, like with you, I've trained you and your boys. It's awesome when I get to train family members. I, I've done it in the past. Uh, it, it's a highlight, it's, it's, it's a nice thing, but um, because life goes on, your one son's living in, uh, Thailand, the other took off to California, but it's back, but he's growing up, he's doing his thing. And um, But the beautiful thing about this distance learning with the Tri-C is you don't, you don't have to be here in Chicago uh, or Illinois. Uh, doesn't matter where you're at, we, you can keep it going. But those two are going to be, especially young Billy, because he's 
I think he might even be younger than me than when I think he was 12 when he started. So that was younger than me. I started this at 13. But um, other than that, though, yes, it was good to see you and Brian. It's a shame we couldn't spend more time together with Brian. And I know after this podcast, you got to bust out and go see your uh, lovely bride. <laughs> but uh, for those, no, I mean, it's sincerely, she beautiful, looks like Adrian. Yo, Adrian. Uh, for those who are, again, we always plug this to try see. Joe will have the link in the description of the podcast video here. Um, yeah, obviously the tri is the, the best bang for your buck because <laughs> literally, you know, whether you're coming to train on site, that's an option for you. You get all the videos right away once, you, once you've signed up and paid up. And then obviously the customized videos, if you can't come out, you're still getting uh, individualized training. So obviously that's the ideal, you know, uh, way to do it. But even if you can't do that, if right now you're in a bind, obviously a lot of people, you know, with whatever's going on with COVID and the economy, uh, the least we could do, we also have a membership program. You know, if you enjoy uh, listening to these podcasts or if you're, you're learning from all the free content that we put up on YouTube, a lot of Tony's video clips are up there. So there's tons of stuff you can get there, but uh, you know, it's not free for us to do. We pay money for this stuff and we pay a lot of our time. And um, you know, honestly, YouTube uh, monetization, really is not a real thing unless you're getting millions of views you know it's not something so if you want to support this if you uh, appreciate it at a minimum we ask join that membership site now it's, there's two levels one's just kind of the hey i want to contribute and pitch in something for uh, all the information that i'm getting from these podcasts and support uh keeping this catch wrestling lineage alive uh, but then there's also the ten dollar a month member where we also film some videos today uh that you there's additional training you can get so there's member there's videos only for those people that are being uploaded to monthly as well so there's two levels there please keep those in mind at a minimum if you're not able to sign up for on-site training or the try c uh please pitch in that way yeah we're, we're not even monetized the youtube channel we're not monetized so yeah no i mean it, it's trying to get to that level like the thousands of views you need really just to make a few dollars here and there you, you really the more I look into it, it's unless you're like the upper echelon, it, it's really, you know, there's it, it, not much there to it. It's, it's a very hard, high bar to hit. And like most, I believe most content creators are probably not making anything off of it. Um, so, no. you know, what I like about like the video that we filmed today for uh, uh, the Canadians, um, this is really great because when they send you like they send me a video clip and this goes for anybody. Uh, you know, I can see the video. I can slow it down. I can replay it if I miss something or I can't, you know, or I may be able to, you know, send them a quick email saying, hey, you know, film it, give, give me a different angle. Normally we sort the angle stuff out in the very beginning videos, you know, when we first start to, excuse me, you know, um, correspond, you know, make sure I can see things and, and all of that. But it's so nice because then I can analyze, you know, and I can really take my time to look because sometimes when it's live, there's a lot of things that a good coach needs to look at. Head position, arm, you know, their feet, their hips. All, there's a lot um, to see. So with this, I can review re or uh, rewind, review. And it really, and even for those who uh, aren't training with anybody and, aren't, and you know, you're not interested in, in anything I have to offer or anyone else, I strongly urge everyone to film yourself. Film yourself, review it, watch it. And if, you know, if you're trying to do this solo, you know, without any instruction, you know, I mean, the best I could tell you is to compare yourself to somebody out there that's similar size and shape and mindset, you know, um, and go frame by frame. You know, see, you open up two video players, go slow motion, frame by frame, <clears throat> see how you compare. It's tough sometimes because you, you don't have the knowledge. You really don't know what to look for. That's where a good coach comes in. But yeah, technology is, is really something. Uh, yeah, I, I wish some of the technology existed like for the music now, like when I was a kid, uh, it, it would have been terrific. I remember I saved up money and I bought this Marantz. I still have it somewhere, a Marantz half speed um, cassette recorder. So you can record stuff and play it back at half speed. And, and that's hard, you know, to still to like transcribe stuff. Um, I just never, I never really, I did it, but what I would have to do sometimes, some of the stuff I was listening to was 
blistering. <laughs> so I'd have to half record it, then re-record it at half speed and then slow it down again. Then you're starting to change pitch and it became, you know, frustrating. <clears throat> now they have electronic digital stuff where, you know, uh, while the quality won't be pristine, you won't lose the pitch. And you can, you can hear the different uh, uh, notes and so on, no matter what it is, piano, accordion, you know, guitar, flute, horn. But yeah, a lot of technology exists and you got to wonder what it, what's it going to be like 20 years from now, you know, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. You probably have like holograms that can show up at your house. <laughs> you can. Yeah. Um, but, you know, a couple points on the video training. A, it's also cool on the student side of it, because sometimes um, like when we've trained at like uh, our friend Jason's gym, you know, pre-COVID, we'd go there weekly and train. But occasionally we film little clips. I still look at them like, you know, we've we've probably trained there dozens of times, but uh I think having that video saved, you can go back and get details that maybe you missed in the moment, you know, as a student. So the coach can use the video to look over what the student's doing, but vice versa. If I have this video, I can see what the coach is doing. It's like, there's little details. Like I was remembering you, you're demoing a head scissor on, it was either Jason or Joe, but the where the placement of your foot and how you got your foot underneath their head, the way you turned your foot, like we didn't talk about that, but I could go back later and say, oh, that's why it was, it was tighter. That's how you're able to get that without having their head pop out. Um, so the fact that they have concrete, you know, demos from you is something they can have for the rest of their lives, you know, to go back and review. So that's, that's has huge value on the student side too. I mean, maybe I'm stating the obvious, but the other point about you saying filming yourself, <laughs> it's funny. It can be painful, man. Sometimes it's, uh, getting that mirror image of, and actually seeing what you look like. Uh, I'll go back to the music analogy too, because we had, uh, you know, I'm in the band and we, uh, we recorded one of our first shows and oh man, was that painful to watch? Because the thing is, is it, it's funny, you don't know what the audience sees you as, you know, when you're up on stage and playing your music, you know, like I didn't realize until I saw it, I was like, holy cow, we're frozen solid, stiff. Like we are so concerned about playing the right notes and getting the music exactly right. But, but it was so boring to look at, you know, <laughs> like from a live music audience, it's like, we're not moving at all. We were, it was almost like we were petrified and it was partially true because we probably had stage fright. We were just like, God, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't pay to watch that concert. You know, that's boring. And so it's little things you don't even notice. So even though it, was, it, it can be painful sometimes, it can illuminate what the perspective is from the outside. And I'm sure for athletics too, it's like what you have a vision of yourself doing and what it actually looks like. You know, it, it's, it's a, it's a, it, it has value there, you know, in, although sometimes it can be painful to have to like, you know, uh, see the flaws, you know, firsthand. Well, too, with the video stuff, especially it, it lends your credibility that establishes you as a student. It establishes your credibility because so many people just outright lie on the internet bullshit. Oh, I trained with Tony or I trained with, you know, this guy, that guy, and they may produce a picture together but what does that mean maybe you just met him on the street or maybe uh you went to a seminar but when you have videos like month after month after month after month you know you end up with you know, all these videos i mean it's like hey man here it is these are custom made videos for me um from my instructor you know that's you know like getting back to jerry sigler and leon sash leon trained a lot of guys not all of them came from out of town. Most of them were from Chicago land area. He lived in Skokie at the time. But I remember, you know, Leon died in like 79. I wasn't even involved in the accordion then. I was in Cleveland. But years later, when I moved to Chicago and I used to go to the Chicago Accordion Club, some of the guys that his students, you know, um, they brought in, one guy brought in a reel-to-reel. -reel, that was before the cassettes. The other guy brought in cassette tapes of their lessons because, you know, they would record their lessons. Like I did with Jerry, I did with Ronnie, but all those got stolen. But Jerry, I still have some um, audio, uh, you know, recordings of my lessons. It's great. And we're not always going to be here. Eventually, you're going to lose your, your coach or your mentor or your instructor. And it's nice to have those memories. So that's another cool thing. Yeah, you can <clears throat> you can have, hey, I, I train X, you know, X amount of time. Here's my videos to, you know, to prove it because... Um, I think we've all gone through that. I know a lot of instructors. I've had it happen countless times with, you know, Joe Blow said he trained with me. I'm like, I don't know the guy. <laughs> Sorry, I never heard of him. You know, um, it didn't happen. 
So this air is this this lends your air of credibility. You can say, yes, I actually did train with the guy, you know, and I have the videos, um, you know, to prove it. So, um, but yeah, we did film uh, a thing for the, the membership program. That's different now. That's just uh, shorter clips, not customized or anything, and really in no order per se. Um, it's never, you know, it's unreleased footage. It's, we we make it as we go along here for the guys, and it's kind of nice because we can take our time and 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 and, and you know film it. Um, so yeah, that's another option again for people. But regardless, it's all about training and you know with with the COVID and just not even even if the COVID dried up today and and was gone, um, the the society has changed quite a lot, you know and you know, distance learning, uh, especially for people that don't live anywhere remotely close to me or to whomever they want to train with, distance learning is the way to go. Um, and we're there, that's going to happen more and more, just like people working from home. They got a taste of it. Now they want to kind of keep that going, many of them. So, um, yep, yeah, time moves on. You know, life changes. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, COVID aside, I think the best option is obviously to be able to do both. Like I was even thinking about that in my work situation, because a lot of people are, um, you know, have gotten to become full-time work remote. And I, I don't even like that. Like I like going into the office <laughs> sometimes, like it's nice to have the option to be at home. Uh, but it's also nice to go in and have that community, you know, and actually work with people face to face. And I think the same goes for training. I mean, I think an ideal thing is to have a mix of both, you know, because, um, yeah. you know, obviously you can do some remote learning, but at some point you got to come in, you got to feel how the techniques feel. You've got to, you know, feel how the pressure feels when you're being, you know, um, put in a hole down or, you know, what does a rip feel like from, from the source? So, I mean, that's an ideal to me is that you can, depending on your schedule, whatever is mix it up. And I think that, you know, that's true in many things. So it, 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 it's, they can do that with, with my program. Yeah, you can, it's not an either or, either you come to Chicago or you stay at home. No, it's both, you know, you, you, you know, you, you get both of them. But um, speaking of that, feeling the rips in this and that and tying into this, we were discussing before um, the podcast today, the, the vast differences in uh, street fighting let's call it that, What whatever moniker you want to lay on it. And the more you quiz me on stuff, because we kind of did a dry run, ladies and gentlemen, on a, uh, we just did a dry run on stuff today for whatever reason we did it um, on stuff and me discussing things from a ground fight, uh, from a, uh, on the ground, but from a street fighting uh, perspective. And there's just so much more involved than there is in a sportive element and as you know it all came again to the surface today with you guys um you know when, when we, we like minds get together and we start throwing things out there you know um you can elaborate on that well yeah i mean and part of it is you know it, we were talking a lot how you know uh, a lot of the training we do or other people do around grappling um, for safety reasons, tends to gravitate towards more the sportive version of it because you can't really do a lot of the street techniques. But it it, it gets dangerous because you kind of lull yourself into a sense of safety. I mean, as tough as sport grappling is, and as you know, exhausting and as painful as that can be, um, you have to stay cognizant of how vulnerable certain situ positions you're in. Like we were doing some, we were demoing up some stuff from the the what they call side control or cross chest from our perspective. I mean, if I'm down there and the bottom guy, my head, my groin, everything's open. You know, I have moments to protect myself there. If someone in a street confrontation, um, you know, I don't have minutes to work and escape out. If someone's really looking, intending to hurt me quickly, uh, you know, someone comes with uh, malicious intent, uh, you forget just how vulnerable you are once once the the gloves are off, so to speak. Um, it's it's a whole different world. And what could normally be like a you know a five minute match in grappling, all of a sudden is you're talking a matter of seconds. You have to you you can't wait. Um, and that's both on the offense and the defense because 
the human body just has too many vulnerable points. And if you've given up a, an important position, man, you're in, you're in a world of hurt and it could be over that quickly. You know, if someone's gotten that advantage on you, um, yeah, the reality of how, just how dangerous uh, an up-close ground fight uh, in, in, in a street scenario is, um, yeah, it's, it's an important thing for anybody who's, you know, uh, considering uh, self-defense and, and especially working in grappling, just how many things are available, uh, you know, for the untrained person, they're instinctively going to go for these things, you know. Well, and, and when, you're, when you're trained to go for those things, then you really don't, you know, grappling especially, I see so much vulnerability because they're doing things textbook, sport, you know, textbook, but they're setting themselves up for disaster, but they don't know. And unfortunately, even their training partners, first of all, are not allowed to capitalize on it because, you know, there's rule sets. But even if they weren't, they, they're probably not aware of it because they've, they've never gone through that, that journey <clears throat> in their training. And you know, I hope nobody has to use any sort of martial art on the street, right? I hope nobody has to do it. And there's some that, you know, just won't. They just won't get into it. But it's, you know, uh, there is a drastic difference. Um, and there's no shortcuts. You know, our straight sportive grappling is, you know, is, you know, world class. But now when you add this other stuff in it, um, all the, the nasty stuff, it, it just takes it in a whole different direction. I think we discussed this once before that. It's not just adding them in, you know, it's, it's your whole approach. Okay. So, uh, you know, because now I have a different, my, my mindset, my, my mind body connection is taking me in a different direction. So it's no longer just, let's say, take him down, you know, get past his legs or whatever. And, you know, look for an arm bar, you know, there's so many other things along the way, and each one of those things can become a detour that'll ultimately uh, end at, at an unexpected destination, but it's a good place for me to be. So you have to think differently. You know, your thought process has to be different. Your ferocity has to be different. You, you know, you just have to, um, it's a different mindset, as, you're, as you know. Well, yeah, for me, it's it's kind of the speed and aggressiveness of it, whether you're trying, defending to get out of a bad position or to finish a fight. You know, I was going live with someone not too long ago. And, you know, again, I was in the sportive mindset. I'd got them in the head and arm and I could hear them breathing. They were struggling, you know, and I knew, hey, you know, they're trying to escape. They weren't getting out, but I could tell from the breathing. Yeah, it's not going to be long before they're going to exhaust themselves and then they're going to be open. Well, that's fine for when I'm doing it in kind of a sportive situation. But if this guy had buddies, you know, or, you know, or possibly had a knife in his pocket or something, I can't play around. You know, if I had gotten into that position, you know, out on the street or, you know, someone uh, invading my home, I can't play that game. That's something that's strictly, you know, uh, a luxury, I guess, is a way of saying it. You don't, you know, there's certain tactics that have to be gotten rid of. I have to either do something to end it or change my position, you know, and get into a safer spot. Um, and, and so, yeah, it's, it's very much a different mind frame that you just, there's a lot of luxuries um, that you, like I said, probably time is the biggest luxury you probably have in a sportive circumstance to get out of a situation or to capitalize on a situation where, you know, I can just wear the guy down if I know he's, you know, flailing around. Well, maybe not so, you know, if, uh, you know, someone else could get involved in the fight or you know, who knows. So uh, yeah, it's a completely different outlook. And it's something that I, it's important, I think, you know, and almost feel like sometimes you should be deliberate in your training and say, okay, we're gonna go here. But if I see things are stalled or locked up, we're calling it, you know, and starting over because that's, we've got ourselves in a, a situation that would be very dangerous in the street. You know, uh, another thing, and I, I'm not gonna mention anybody because this is not, I don't wanna embarrass anyone, but I sent you guys the link to, to watch the, the clip on, on, on YouTube. Uh, reality-based, uh, that's all we'll say. Um, and, you know, t some older man instructor trying to teach, you know, um, serious, you know, military people, whatever. No, they didn't have any real like experience. And he, he did a disservice in my mind because he made things look like this is simple. Okay. This is all you got to do. And in this in instance, it was just a matter of a simple arm drag. Now you're behind him and you can choke him from the rear. 
as if it's that easy, right? Any high school wrestler, probably any junior wrestler, even before high school, you know, would say, no, 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 you're not going to arm drag me like that. And and I think this is important uh, that we get this out there, that real, true reality-based martial arts, not the label, okay, not just, you know, putting eye pokes and, you know, bites and shit, but true reality-based is not simple. It's not a quick fix. It's not something you're going to learn uh, in, in, in five easy lessons. It's an addendum. And I think many people who enter the reality-based styles, whatever it is, that have no sportive background, don't realize what techniques actually are viable and just the level of skill it takes to pull it off. When you're constantly cooperative, you kind of lose the sense of, yeah, I don't know if this is really going to work. So, you know, just like when you're boxing, okay, you're hitting a heavy bag, you're hitting a speed bag, that's pretty easy. When you're, when you're trying to hit somebody that's really moving and knows what they're doing and giving you all these acute angles and everything, then you realize, my goodness, things are a little bit more difficult than I thought. So I think um, this is something that people really need to address. Years ago, I got an email out of the blue, don't know who it was from. He never responded because I don't think he liked my answer. He was in the middle of a debate, apparently, on this uh, some internet forum. And he, and he basically asked me, I'm paraphrasing, but, you know, Tony, you know a lot about street fighting. You know, it's pretty easy, right? How, how would you compare, like, learning the street fight to an MMA? You don't need that many techniques, right? And I wrote back, I said, in essence, every technique in MMA, you need to know and more. Street fight is, is more than an MMA match. And he never responded. He didn't want to hear that probably would have lost, I'm sure that he would have lost his debate. But there's people that just think, man, it's so simple. Yeah, you might get lucky. You you might, you know, you might just hit the guy in the throat or get his eye. Who knows? Any, anything can happen. It's, it's dynamic. But boy, if that's how you're going into it, thinking you don't have to be in shape or thinking, well, I'll just do this and that. Um, man, I just, I can't, I can't, I, I just can't condone that, especially when it's a street fight where you can literally get somebody killed. Uh, scares me, man. No, no, no. I'd rather overkill. I'd rather overtrain, you know, have you over prepared as opposed to under prepared. You follow me? Yeah. And I think that's the other, the flip side or the, the other, one of the other mental traps uh, of the thing is that you're saying, well, obviously sportive things, you know, if, if there's vulnerabilities in, in, in sports where they're not, you know, like, uh, not, you know, 100% of sports don't allow groin strikes or eye gouges for obvious reasons. So therefore, if I just have groin strikes and eye gouges, well, I can, I can, you know, it can beat anybody. Right. And, uh, uh, and, and fortunately, I said, it's, the, it's, they've taken it too far to the other direction. It's really that middle spot. You need both. It's not one or the other. And, um, you know, you need to, um, I'm par I think I'm plagiarizing somebody. Like, you've got to train like you're an, a sportive athlete, but also keep in mind the, the street realities of it. Um, and I, and I think obviously it's, I suspect for a lot of people where it's like, oh, I'll just kick them in the groin or I'll just gouge them in the eye or whatever. Um, it's kind of a, kind of a cop out or just a way to like looking for a quick fix or an excuse not to train hard, you know, and, ex and ignore the, the benefits of the hard sport of training. Um, but yeah, the truth is in the middle there. You need both. It's not that you need either or, uh, or that, I mean, basically there's, there's issues with both, but you, you can be negative on one side or the other because there are people who literally just like you said it's completely cooperative because if you're going to practice groins strikes or eye gouges of course it has to be cooperative you got to keep people safe um but yeah it, it's very quickly becomes artificial you know people are not responding and the minute you it, it can be a very rude wake up the first time you go live with someone you know and that's even if you're drilling what i would call like sportive submissions and things um you know, when you go live, it, 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 it's, a, it's a reminder of just how difficult it is on, on a resisting opponent. Um, yeah, to pull anything off, like you mentioned, just an arm drag. You know, most people, if they have some training, they're not going to let you just grab that arm, you know, and get, get to the side of them. They're going to, they're going to, there's going to be a response. And so, uh, yeah, as I said, that's the flip side of this is not thinking there's a cop out, you know, and a lot, a lot of people have that with guns too. Well, I'll just have a gun or something, but you know, we train for the scenarios like, what if I don't have that, you know, 
Um, that's why we're doing what we do. I mean, sure, of course, those things are, are you know, could be a part of your, your self-defense strategy, but um, why, why sell yourself short, you know? Um, why take that risk, I guess? Um, so yeah, just, I guess, be objective and honest with yourself as to why you're doing these things training. And what if I did come up against someone, like in my case, you know, I'm probably, I'm pretty average size. So it's very likely I'm going to come up against someone who's bigger, you know, probably younger and maybe even fitter. So I've got to deal with those realities too, you know, uh, and that's kind of another uh, inspirational side of it is to keep working at it because uh, that's just going to be another, uh, you know, a struggle of mine in these scenarios. Well, using that arm drag as an example, um, <clears throat> you know, if, if, if the guys were sparring and, you know, obviously it's going to fail uh, once they start to, let's say, go live, because just doing an arm drag is not harmful. Uh, now what? You know, they're going to be like, well, now what? You know, we don't know anything else. Now, do we, now what now? So it, it kind of like can be demoralizing. And it's demoralizing what, what many instructors probably don't realize, it's demoralizing along the whole chain of your instruction. So they're like, well, Christ, if this move that he taught me is so difficult, man, I can't count on any of this now, can I really, you know? Um, so you, you just you, you just have to really make a commitment in your mind to know, I can't learn this in a weekend. I, I'm not going to become, you know, Rambo or, you know, James Bond in, in in a weekend, it, it's it's a lifetime commitment, but what it will do, hopefully, is open up your mind, start developing that, and and get you to be creative. Okay, so like a cook, a chef, who may experiment adding different ingredients once they have the, the base recipe. Now they'll try to add different ingredients to change it a little bit, something more to their taste. Um, that's what you eventually have to do. But you have to have that base. You have to have the proper ingredients and you, you have to have the right recipe. So with us, you have to have the proper ingredients as far as the good base technique, boxing, wrestling, what have you. And the, uh, you know, just learn to add a little things, you know, and if, you're, if your instructor didn't cover everything, you know, use some creativity here. You know, you're, you're not they're not going to be there for you more than likely when, when, when it goes down on the street. So you're going to have to learn to improvise, but um, yeah, there's no quick fix. I mean, again, anybody can get lucky, lucky punch, lucky thing, whatever. Um, and nobody's debating that that does happen, but you know, I just don't, I've never been one to count on that. man. you know, I don't, I just, I've seen too much and I know that things don't go down textbook. I told somebody once before, Many, many years ago, what well, I've said is probably a lot, but real fighting is ugly. Okay. If you see a demo and it's all beautiful and flowery and, you know, all choreographed, oh, great athleticism, great, great, great. But that's got no correlation to a real fight. It's tends to be really, you know, it can be, it can go in any direction. And like you mentioned, if there's other people involved, uh, weapons, uh, bad, uh, you know, the ground or the, the conditions that you're fighting in limited limited um you know i mean you better think quick on your feet got to be you better be a macgyver you know you know i'll make a counterpoint not necessarily but um a, a subtle variation on the idea though it, it is a lifetime and there's no quick fix and you know if you really want to master this obviously it's it's it just becomes like a lifestyle you know it's something you just you're committed to but on the flip side or i don't know I'll also say this, though, for someone who has no experience, if you do spend just a short amount of time working the fundamentals, so working your stance, your footwork, your head movement, uh, very quickly you can become significantly safer. You're not mm -hmm. going to be bulletproof, um, but, you know, in some ways, so I guess I'm trying to encourage people who are brand new beginners not to think, oh, gosh, I won't be able to defend myself for, you know, take me three years before I can be, in some ways, if you have a good coach and they give you the fundamentals of like, okay, and the fundamentals you'll need to practice your whole life, uh, they will, you'll be a lot safer, you know, after lesson number one, if you've got a good coach, like I said, you know, just being able to move, getting in the proper stance, 
um, I guess I'm repeating myself, but those things, you know, all of a sudden the, the odds are starting to get in your favor right away because maybe those some, you know, like a huge percentage of street fights, I'm assuming is someone just trying to take your head off with a haymaker. Well, if I know how to move and not be knocked off my feet and uh, protect my head and keep my chin down, I'm a lot safer already, you know? So it's not a, like, you know, a, a panacea or a silver bullet, but if you start to work the fundamentals of true fighting skills, uh, that learning curve for a beginner, you know, within a matter of several lessons, you are already a lot safer than someone with no experience. So in some ways, I want to encourage people to like, if you jump, if you're looking to get it, those fundamentals can take you a lot further than you realize. You're very true there. Yeah, it, it is all about the fundamentals. I was just more or less talking about these little trick things like eye gouging, you know. Like, oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's kind of like I'm trying to differentiate like, yeah, like I don't need to train or practice at all. I just know if I just try and randomly go for their eyes or groin, well, that's that's next to no, no skills because yeah, if you stumble and fall or whatever, but there is in some ways you can feel a lot safer and a lot, uh, 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 yeah, more secure in yourself uh, and physically confident being out there just by, I would say within the first several few lessons, honestly, uh, you know, because very quickly, uh, if, if you focus on the right skill set and practice those, it's, it can be a game changer, you know, for your safety. Yeah. And I, and I think you need to have an, an instructor for sure. That's, you know, com look, a, a lot of people want to say they're reality based. And, and I guess I'm a hard sell on that because, you know, I want to see, I've seen a, through the years, a lot of, you know, stuff as you have, and, you know, it's kind of hokey. It's not going to really, I mean, it'll work against slugs, but you know, not against brutes, but a, something that's tried and true boxing wrestling you know whatever jujitsu you know something that's tried and true um you know it's a safe bet you know just just get into it and and stay with it um and you're right learn those fundamentals of movement making yourself hard to hit or hard to you know get a handle on and never being out of position always being ready to strike um you know that, that goes a long way i i can't emphasize how important boxing is and, and and it really is uh and not just for the strikes you know but for the defensive how to move and angles and all the science about that the footwork and same with you know wrestling and what what i teach to catch submissions and you, you know but yeah other than that you know um you you need to use something that's going to make you a, like be a propellant right so you want to see those improvements and that just psychs you up, you know, when you're always, when you start to get like, you know, get better and better and things become easier and you start to learn your body, learn how to control your body, which is so important. Um, I've said that today when we were doing the little uh, dry run, run video, before you can control your opponent, you got to control yourself. You have to know how to control your body. If your body's all just, you know, you know, uh, contorted improperly, it's all mangled on your own. How are you gonna how are you gonna handle another person? You're not. You're not gonna be able to. So uh, there's a lot of thinking that's involved in this. So there are some people out there that are really into the martial art histories and samurai and Sun Tzu and all of that. If you got that kind of mindset too, that's great because the study of the science of, of self-defense is um, it's a deep subject. You know, it, it's it's like a bottomless well. You can always you know, uh, learn more and more and more. It's, it's, it's really fascinating. But uh, outside of all of that, uh, what's, what else is going on with you, Joe? Well, actually, uh, so kind of an interesting correlation to self-defense against violence. I, don't, I haven't told you this yet, but I've, I actually signed up for a CPR class. Um, and so this is, um, I'm going to do it through the, uh, a red cross i think basically you get a certificate and uh, there's like a uh there's some online training you do first and hopefully this next weekend i'll actually go for the in-person training um but i'm even contemplating and i don't know if this will pan out but there's a uh, emt training near me uh, there's a couple places that offer it emergency medical tech um but in some ways uh, it's it's kind of been dawning on me that i've been in more situations where people have had medical emergencies um, 
than they've had actually violent encounters. You know, like I've, that's just another area of safety that I've kind of, I realize I'm completely ignorant of. Uh, uh, once, I mean, I've got a million stories. One of my, my favorite stories is the singer in our band, Mark, he's kind of a notorious, I don't know, he's, he's, he's a weird guy. He'll, he's one of those guys who'll just kind of like, he'll go through weird fad diets or uh, r- random things with what he's eating. And like uh, one time we were at the work um, cafeteria and he just had like a bowl of uh, uh, kale and some salad dressing. And, you know, I think he was trying to lose weight or economize money or something. Well, he ate that. And of course, he's completely dissatisfied because kale is horrible, right? And he's like, mm-hmm. gosh, I need something more for my lunch. So he got up, he went to the vending machine and got some Cheetos, right? So he's really getting the yin and yang of the diet. He's got a thing of just kale and then the thing of Cheetos. So he sits down, he eats it. And of course, you do that. I don't care who you are. You're going to have the same reaction. You're going to feel like you have to puke, right? So he's like, oh my God, I'm nauseous. Holy shit, I'm going to throw up. And so he got up, got up from our table very quickly and ran over to the sink because he was going to hurl. But because he stood up so fast, now his blood pressure dropped and he basically made it to the sink and passed out. And he like, he did a header into the paper towel dispenser. Boom, smashed into the, and then off the counter of the sink and down on the ground, he was out. So this was kind of like, he like knocked himself out by eating kale and Cheetos. He, it was, it was, I mean, it was, it was hilarious actually, but I mean, so we, I run over them like, holy shit. And so I see him and he's, his eyes are wide open, but he's got the thousand yard stare. Like he is not conscious. Yeah. And I realized I had no idea what to do. Like, you know, am I supposed to elevate his feet? Am I checking his airway? I had no idea what to do. You know, I work with IT. I'm like, shit, do I reboot him? I have no fucking <laughs> idea what to do with this guy. You know, fortunately, I, I work in healthcare too. So there were nurses in the near vicinity who heard a Rutgers and kind of came over and took charge and got 911 and all these things. Um, but that's just one example of where someone was possibly in a very, you know, it could have been a heart attack or a stroke. He could have been choking. You know, I, there's all kinds of things. Um, I'm trying to think of some other stories where I've had people, you know, collapse or in front of me or whatever. I mean, sometimes it's just out of my looks. I get that kind of reaction. Yeah. Well, yeah well, those two blondes, when you took your shirt off the one time. Yeah. I'm used to that though. I know how to handle that situation, but, um, but, but really, I mean, I think, I guess my, my point being is I'm making a pitch saying that, you know, I think a lot of our audience are people who are concerned about, um, you know, self-defense and safety in a broad sense. And that's why I'm actually kind of doing the flip side of, well, what is the, the health care side of this? What is the emergency medicine side of this? This is something that I think, honestly, everybody should know. It's, it's kind of one of those funny things that like, you know, we go through 12 years of school, mandatory education, and maybe they touch on that. You know, maybe there's a slideshow in health class, but it should be drilled and instinctive. You know, it's fascinating to me. I'm going through the online and they're like, okay, this is the first thing you do. You ask them, you know, uh, you know, a, a, you have to get consent from them if they're conscious, you know, is it okay? This is my background. Are you okay with me trying to help? And if they say yes, then you have to, there's like a, a, a checklist of things you have to ask. Do you have allergies? Are you on any medication? What's the last thing you ate? You know, you have to kind of gather this information to really diagnose what's going on. And that stuff, I, I mean, it's obvious now that when I, when I say it, they're like, yeah, you need to know all this basic stuff. Um, but like I said, if, if you're not, if you haven't trained and educated yourself in this, you may not know. You just might run up and, hey, what's okay? Are you all right? What can, you know, can I get you a glass of water? You know, you could have all kinds of wrong instincts what to do. Uh, and it just, like I said, it really has been an eye opener doing this training. Just how many different things can <laughs> go wrong with the human body? I mean, you've got heart attacks, strokes, choking, um, cuts, burns. I mean, each thing requires its own procedure. Um, uh, so, that's just a whole other aspect of kind of what I would say my uh, greater self-defense training. I, you know, last time we had the podcast, I was doing the uh, outdoor survival stuff, but this is another aspect of it. It's like, you know, what do I need to know to be safe? Well, I'll double up on that. That's great. You know, years ago, I had my CPR and multimedia standard first aid. I, I never did an EMT thing. Um, but yeah, that's matter of fact, come to think of it, I need to renew my CPR um, for sure. Um yeah, this EMT thing, that's terrific. I mean, it's just, you know, you do need to know that. Um, you know, absolutely. I, I think every everybody should. I know that, like, at my health club, they have the defib- defibrillator on the wall, and, and they're trained on how to use that. Um, I don't, they're not EMTs or anything, but they have to have that there, I guess, in case, you know, somebody's having a heart attack and stuff. Um, but, yeah, the more you know, I mean, it's just, 
you know, it's it's really great. And it'll also start to dispel some myths. Well, maybe not, not CPR probably won't, but maybe not even EMT. But if you really got into studying physiology, anatomy, and so on, you'll start to learn it. Oh, man, I, such like driving the nose up into the brain. It's a myth. Okay, that, that doesn't actually happen. But I mean, still a very effective uh, strike. But there's myths out there. Uh, and you'll also learn that, you know, chokes aren't completely uh, without, I mean, they're dangerous. Plaque can break loose if, you know, and, and you can cause a stroke or, you know, an embolism or something. You, you know, there, yeah, I, I think this is something that everybody needs to probably dive into. Good for you, Joe. I, I mean it. Just good for you. Thanks. I mean, the EMT thing, that's a big commitment. That's at least a couple nights a week. I haven't started that. So I'm just doing like what I'd call their prerequisites. How long is that course? Uh, I think it's a full semester. So that'll be, you know, basically uh, 12 to 16 weeks, uh, two nights a week. And I may, like I said, I haven't figured it all. I'm just starting to gather. Like I know that the CPR is like one of the things you have to present to, to qualify and they do background checks. So it's, it's pretty involved. Um, and I background. think I'm going to, hmm? background checks. Yeah, I think they, for, I don't know why, but they want, uh, they also want criminal background checks, maybe because I, they assume you're going to work in the industry. Because a lot of, I would say like, you know, probably 99% of the people who are doing EMT training, that's a career path for them. They're going to be firefighters or they're going to yeah. be, you know, whatever. Um, uh, but honestly, yeah. And, uh, but so to your question about how long it's going to take, I think I also, there's going to be, if I'm actually going to qualify for that, I think I'm going to have to like, uh, there's actually going to be like ride along times that I'm going to have to do. So I'm going to have to put in so many hours of actual working with emergency people possibly i don't like i said i'm still this is the this is all new this is something within the last couple of weeks that i've been thinking about mm -hmm. and i just started to do uh but it's just like a whole other and yeah if if this if i keep going on with this it'll be interesting there's something else we can kind of cover on the podcast uh you know just little tips and things like that because i think this is all part of it's all it's just another dimension to that same thing i think we're all working with we want to be safer we want to be able to protect our loved ones um you know, and sometimes, yeah, it's not, it's not just from a violent encounter, you know, uh, it, it could be anything, you know, there's all kinds of, you know, that could accidentally get poisoned or whatever. I mean, life's full of, life is not safe, you know, and, and we need to learn what we can to keep ourselves protected and safe. So stay tuned, news, to, like the plan, that's my tentative plan. Right now, I've only, I've only begun my CPR training. Hopefully that'll be done maybe by the time of the next podcast. But yeah, that definitely seems like something like every few years or so it's worth reviewing because there's a lot of information out there because like i said they're not just covering you know how to do the the cpr and the breathing they want you to have you know there's a, at least a dozen different medical scenarios you could walk up on someone you know who's uh got heat stroke let's say you know i mean there's all you know whatever uh, frostbite or hypothermia you know just all coming to my mind there's a lot of situations out there where people and and i think honestly people who want to be truly like what i would consider full spectrum martial artists this is something you should want under your belt as well. And to take it a step further than that, I think people should study psychology. Certain um, branches of psychology, as you know that I have, I, I think that is, you know, really tremendous. Uh, it, 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 it can help you uh, with certain aspects. It's not a, you know, it's not an elixir. It's not a cure-all. Um, you'll still get upset. You'll still, you know, like the, most of the country will cry when the Cleveland Browns lose, you know, um, you'll just, but it, it will get you a better handle on things and, and, and learn how to delve into quickly trying to see what a person's mindset is like, you know, make those snap assessments. And, you know, cause there's certain times that, there's certain people you're not going to talk down, you know, you're not going to get to them. Okay. They're psychologically tarnished and you need to be able to see that kind of figure out where you're going and and just like okay um and it helps you yourself well, oh yeah sometimes. Sometimes. And i mean definitely if you're a browns fan specifically you're going to want a lot of bone up on the psychology well next weekend the cleveland browns play the chicago bears at cleveland so we'll do the podcast but not on sunday we'll have to do it saturday or something because i'm pulling for the cleveland browns and uh i'm telling you right now man don't you don't even oh man you want to bet on the game? No, I'll think about it. Yeah, you think about it. I haven't. Uh, I haven't been watching, so I have no ideas. It's not like the Bears have been. Uh, it's, it's been a long time since the '80s. Let me just say that when the <laughs> when, when the Bears were playing well. Um, 
Isn't that uh, something about Mongo McMichael with ALS? Boy, I saw a picture of him yesterday. Yeah. Mm. Really bad, you know, and that's a terrible, you know, Lou Gehrig's disease, amy myotropic lateral sclerosis. And, uh, you know, that is that is a horrible, horrible disease. And uh, I really hope that eventually they would, they'll find a cure for that. Um, it's part of the muscular dystrophy. It's, you know, in essence, uh, uh, infantile paralysis. You, you, you lose abilities and ultimately you just can't breathe anymore. You stop breathing and you'll lose the ability to speak perhaps, or your hands, uh, you, you know, your, your, your motor functions. And it's, uh, you know, it's terrible. Uh, well, I didn't realize he had that. You yes. i had seen back. some things where he looked and I was like, gosh, is it just because he took too many hits, you know, that is he just, was it kind of a, you know, like a long time boxer or something where it was just kind of cumulative, you know, head damage, but well, who knows? Uh, there's many, many people that had it that 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 never were, you know, brain concussed. Um, you know, it it just happens. John Drury, I don't know if you remember him. He was a local newscaster for many years, and he passed away from uh, ALS. Uh, oh, maybe 10, 12 years ago, something like that. And they, he wanted the cameras in there, you know, near the end of his life. To sh he was just bedridden. He was just laying there. He couldn't. Mm. He was functional in the mind. Well, Stephen Hawking, you know, same thing, you know, and Stephen Hawking was one of those long term survivors. I mean, normally you don't live as long as Stephen did um, with that diagnosis. But uh, yeah, it's it's a terrible. You know, it's just a terrible thing. Uh, many, many. There have been quite a few athletes that that have passed it. And, you know, um, while, like I said, I was never a Bears fan. Um, you know, Mc, who wants to see anybody like that? McMichael was a good guy. He did pro wrestling for a while. And, you know, uh, then he was announcing pro wrestling. And, you know, apparently he was one of these jokers, you know, funny guys. And, you know, it seems like he would have been a guy that I would have gotten along with and you would have gotten along with. And it's just a shame to see that it really is. And, uh, yeah, uh, boy. But, yeah, we'll see what happens next Sunday uh, with the Browns and the Bears. And, uh I'm not going to make a prediction. The Bears or the Browns lost last week. They should have won, came close, but they didn't. Uh, the game is probably they're playing right now. I think the Browns. Um, I'm not sure what type what their kickoff was, but the Bears are playing now. Um, hmm. But nonetheless, though, um, for me, I think you're heading in the right direction with at least the CPR and EMT is a big jump. I won't do that. I won't be. I wouldn't be able to. Um, but the CPR, maybe first aid. Um, because that's just a day or two course. It's 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 not as elaborate. Uh, um, I just can't leave. Uh, you know what, what happened sure. this week with my mom. It, take, it took a step far worse uh, for situation for me and her. Um, so me leaving is going to be, it's not going to happen, period, um, leaving the house. And uh, but who knows what will happen down the line. But I didn't know that you could you could even do an EMT course, but maybe once everything is settled here and I move back to the city, you know, uh, Harper or wherever, uh, not Harper, what's the- uh, Wright College? Or yeah, Wright, Wright College down there. Yeah, um, maybe they offer something like that. Uh, no, who knows? Yeah, and I mean, it, uh, definitely, uh, like I said, uh, we'll see how it goes. Like I said, it's just in the planning or stages right now, but yeah. Triton would be good. So yeah. I know uh, College of DuPage is the one that's close to me, but there's also um, certain, like one of the ones I was looking at is one of the, one of the suburbs has a fire academy where they train their people and it's open to the, you know, the public too, if you can sign up, you know, assuming there's space. So um, yeah, if all the, uh, if all, if I get all my ducks in a row, that'll be happening. That'll, that'll be a good uh, uh, a goal for next year. Um, and I'll double down, you know, maybe some closing thoughts we have here um, on, on the, psychology aspect of it um you know even for your own whether it's like you know we always talk about maybe um trying to uh talk someone down in a self-defense situation but to me just being educated in uh you know psychology and some things will keep you healthy for yourself you can analyze your own emotions uh it's just like knowing you know what's the proper food to eat you know it's, it's, it's one of those things that i think gets glossed over in our education uh but there's a lot of like uh, you know, mental fallacies that you can make that can get yourself worked up emotionally. You know, a lot of times you can spiral, you know, if you're not paying attention to your emotions and what the sources of your emotions are, 
uh, you can suffer a lot. I mean, it's to me, it's another aspect of your health. I don't, uh, I don't say that lightly. That you know, emotional and mental health is is equal to physical health. You know, I mean, in a worst case scenario, people hurt themselves because they're so upset. So I mean, it's it's life or death, and and uh, being educated about it and tending to it is just as important as anything else in your life. That's the thing with what I go through. It's the emotional, you know, because you're, you're trapped here. It's stressful. I don't get sleep. But things happen out of the blue with her and everything. And it's, it, it's, so I have to rely on what I learned in the past to, you know, keep me grounded. And, you know, um, and I, we don't need to get into this now because it's a deep subject, but you do have to breathe, walk away, get away. That's the main thing. And also you, you want to have a support group. I don't have that right now because, mm -hmm. you know, we're all, disjointed but um the other thing maybe we'll touch on on our next podcast i told you i've stumbled upon these crazy kind of um, i don't know not conspiracy i don't know what you would call it these videos um on on you know how people keep you down and you know we're all slaves and all that and that's another thing that's all bullshit you know it's it's all up in here you need to create your you're in control of your mind okay and you have to really be, you should be in control of it. I shouldn't say you're in control of your mind. You're capable of controlling your mind. Unless you have a, you know, TBI, um, you should be able to control it and, and get to that point where you can make things happen. Um, and yeah, that'll be another subject for another time because that would be a deep subject. But you, too many people, especially nowadays, it seems, want to pin it on everybody else. It's always somebody else's fault. You know, it's not mean, it's it's him or her, it's everybody but me. You got to start owning up to it. And even if in a situation, it really isn't your fault, it truly isn't your fault, how you react to it is is totally up to you. That is in your control. Okay, we established you did no wrong, but are you going to harbor this anger or whatever the, the emotion is and and let that eat you up? and say like this with my mom it's not her fault this is not self-inflicted on my mother i certainly didn't do it to my mother neither once nobody's fault but it doesn't change what we're going through or what i'm going through as a as a caregiver um so it it, it makes no difference okay if somebody did this to her or it just happened i'm in the same position no matter what so it's all up to me now on how I handle it and how I, how I can move forward. You, you I heard a really good comment on uh, mental health um, from a friend, and I, I think there's a lot of truth to it. And he says, you know, because a lot of times uh, what people get hung up on too is they, they, they have a certain emotional reaction and then they feel guilty that they had that emotional reaction. It's like a one-two punch. They feel bad that they know they felt bad in a certain way or they're, they're upset at themselves that they're depressed or whatever. And, uh, and he kind of, and I'm sure he's sure he got it from somewhere else, but he basically said, it's not your fault. Cause a lot of times people carry traumas from their youth growing up. I mean, you know, so much of what happens in your formative years affects your outlook and your mental health. And so he says, you know, it's not your fault that you have these things, but it is your responsibility to get better. You have to take the steps to get better. You, you didn't maybe bring this on yourself, but now you, you have to take the steps, you know, and so, and, and I think that's a really good way of looking at it that, yeah, you know, a lot of your reactions, you, you learn from so many sources growing up, you know, subliminal, even some things are implied uh, and you just pick up on it and you don't even know why you react, whether you're, you get depressed or you get anxious or you have angry outbursts, but you know what, you, you're here now and now you've got to make yourself, you've got to reach out and find those sources that'll make you get better. That's on you to take those corrective steps. You know, you might not have chosen to be this way, but you can you can choose to work on it and get better. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. And 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 you may get to the point where you know you you're you're out of options, right? Like where I'm at now, I've, I've hit rock bottom here. There's no more options outside of you know end time options. You know, it's super extreme. But you know, there's people who are doing life in prison that seem to mentally cope right it, it's a cope you got to figure a way to cope and and hopefully to um you know keep moving forward develop you know make some sort of development with yourself either your soul your physical or your your mind it's a deep subject but it it all ties in together because um 
And again, I wish you saw this video. Maybe I'll give you a link to it if I can find it with this wackadoo. And, you know, um, <laughs> this guy, yeah, oh, I'm an anarchist, I'm an alpha male. He's, he's none of that, you know. And um, if you cannot control yourself, if you're always out of control, like I said earlier today about controlling your body before you can control your opponents, if you can't control your mind, I mean, it's okay to get mad. It's All of these emotions are fine. We talked about this before. With, with REBT, you know, psychology, you know, mad, glad, sad, scared, you know, you allow those emotions. You just can't go overboard. And so if you're, if you're blowing your cool and just going like berserk constantly, there's a problem there. Now it's okay to blow off steam, right? But you better like, like training, physical training, your recovery period is what's significant. And I don't think a lot of people talk about that from an emotional standpoint. Man, it's okay. It's okay to have, you know, this emotion. How how long is your recovery period, man? You know, I mean, you, you got to regroup. You know, you agree, take your time, do what you got to. But, man, you, you don't have, like, infinity. And especially in a street fight scenario, yeah, you can get startled. You can get so angry, like you're screaming. But then you better pull it together, man, you know, and, and focus here. Uh, and I think that's something that's just not addressed. And that's, you know, like what relationships, you know, you may hold a grudge forever. Well, I don't think that's the way to go. You may not want to have anything to do with the guy anymore. That's fine. Cut that guy out as if he doesn't exist. But people who hold grudges, people who are looking for revenge, you know, you're, 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 you're hurting yourself. You know, you're, you may get you may get back at the person, but what at what cost to you? You know, and I don't mean jail time even. Just how much damage is it doing to you? How many friendships are you ruining? How many jobs have you lost? How much relationship strife are you having? Because you can't um, recover. You can't get over it, in essence. And I don't mean get over it like like that. And getting over it is really not a good word to use, but it's your recovery period. Work on it. So anyway, guy, I guess uh, you're going to have to be heading back. So we were supposed to have a special guest today, a uh, former professional fighter that I have trained and hung out with and know and haven't seen in a while, but apparently he couldn't make the show. Uh, that's unfortunate, but I'm sure we'll reschedule and have him on another day. Uh but I want to thank you. Oh, shout out to Brian and Eve again. Thank you, Brian, for coming out here. And, uh, you know, thank you, Joe. Uh, and, you know, if you guys enjoyed the podcast, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, you know, ring that bell. So I used to say, you know, like Rocky or like Mickey. Um, and uh, any closing thoughts on your end? No, I think we covered a lot of ground here. I think this is a good conversation. So I look forward to more, man. Yeah, it's great. Great hanging out today. And, like I said, yeah, if, if you if people, if you're getting anything from this content at a minimum, join that membership site. That'd be a huge help. And thank you very much for those who've done it already. Yes, I really mean it. And I'll see you guys and see you, Joe, next week. Yep, see you.